Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, sorry. Got my thing caught. <laughs> there we go. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. Just in case this is your first time here, I'm Alison. I'm a member of the Messy Church team at Bridlington Priory. And for those of you that have joined us before, Dara's having a week off this week, uh, but he'll be back with us next week. <laughs> So today we're actually a bit behind because um, we are talking about something that we celebrated on Sunday, Easter Sunday in fact, but we'll talk more about that shortly. First, here's a reminder about what's happening both online and at the Priory. So Monday to Saturday we have midday prayers. Hopefully it won't surprise you that they're at midday, uh, led by members of the Priory community. And at 6 p.m., Reverend Matthew leads evening prayers. The Priory is open for personal prayer on Wednesday and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. On Sunday at 10.30, our service is both in person and online. And at 6 p.m. is either a reflection or even song online. And this week, I believe, is a reflection with Reverend Christine. Reverend Maxine is running the Faithful and Friends group, which meets on Zoom for fellowship and prayer on Sunday, and that's between 4 and 5 p.m. If you'd like to join them, uh, you need to contact Reverend Maxine for the Zoom details. And as always, the contacts page from the Priory website is linked on the post that follows this broadcast on Facebook. Um, <laughs> so do join us if you can for any of those and don't forget if you would like pr a prayer rather prayers when I can speak for you a family member or friend uh, do let us know either by messaging the Facebook page or using the contact details on the Priory website and uh, I do know because I've just seen it on Facebook as well that there is a book of condolence opened um, which the details for when you can sign that if you want to is on the Facebook page as well so you need to check that okay wonderful so let's have a moment to open our hearts and our minds as we get ready oh Priory is open to sign the book of condolence in memory of HRH Prince Philip RIP yes thank you Jam I think that's you um Yes, I, I can't remember when it's open, but I know there is a post up that says when you can come and sign that. So it's there. The details are there if you want to check that out. Right. So we'll just have a moment now before we begin. Dear Lord, we thank you for our family and friends. We thank you that we can always talk to you. All we have to do is pray. We thank you for our time at Messy Church and we pray that we learn more about you through our story. Help us to remember to always listen to you and to try to do what you would want us to do. Thank you, Lord. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So last week, as we said, was Good Friday. And so we focused on what that meant. This week, we get to see what comes on Easter Sunday and why it's such a joyful day for us. But before I say any more, let's hear our story. <laughs> Thank you, Tinkerbell. That's really funny. It was very early. The birds were still in bed and the sun had yet to open his, its bright eye on the world. The sky was grey and grainy. The air was cold. And three women walked slowly towards the graveyard. Jesus was buried there and the women were coming to visit his grave. They talked in sad whispers, they cried, they held each other's hands. Jesus had been dead for three days and they missed him very much. Just as they reached the graveyard, something surprising happened. 
the ground began to shake. The air began to tremble and quick as lightning, an angel flashed down from heaven and rolled the stone away from Jesus's tomb. Everything went quiet. The ground stopped moving, but the women shook with fear. Don't be afraid, the angel said. Come and see. The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. Arm in arm, the women crept past the angel and into the tomb. The sheets were still there. The sheets they had wrapped around his dead body. But Jesus himself was gone. Where is he? asked the women. What have you done with him? I told you, smiled the angel. He's not dead anymore. He's come back to life. And he wants you to tell all his friends. The women looked at each other. They didn't know whether to laugh or cry. They could hardly believe it. That is, until they hurried out of the tomb and ran straight into Jesus. Oh, Jesus, they cried. It, it's true. You are alive. And they fell at his feet, amazed. There's no need to be afraid anymore, he said. God has made everything all right. But I have a job for you. I want you to tell the rest of my friends that I am alive. Tell them I will meet them on the seashore in Galilee, where all our adventures started. The women waved goodbye and hurried off to Jerusalem. The birds were singing now. The sun's bright eye was wide open and they had the most amazing story to tell. How strange and wonderful it must have been after going to the tomb to mourn, only to find it empty. And then to see firstly an angel telling them Jesus was risen, and then seeing Jesus returned from the dead. And this is why Easter is so important for those of us who believe in Jesus. The day he was resurrected is the day we remember that we are saved from sin because of the sacrifice he made. And that wonderful act means that we can all look forward to eternal life ourselves. So our craft today is a uh, joyful reminder, sorry Tinkerbell, you're going to have to move up there, that he is risen. Um, so let's, uh, let's start. And the first thing you're going to need for this one is one of these paper plates. So you need a paper plate. And then what you're going to do with your paper plate is you are going to paint it. Now I know you may not have paints. If you've got a messy church bag, you will have had some paints in your messy church bag. But if you didn't, don't worry, Dara, although he's taking a week off, has very kindly done the craft stuff for me today. So um, if you don't have um, paints, you can use felt tips to do this as well. And all you're going to do is you're going to draw a blue sky, green grass, and then sort of like a sunrisey type thing here. But, you know, Dara said, oh, it looks a bit like a rainbow, but it's OK. It can look really like however you want. So that's your first thing is to colour or paint your plate. Now in the links I've linked you to a picture where I got the idea for this from and they've got some pictures there of some finished ones that you can have a look at. Um, and also in the template dun, 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 is uh, some cross templates. Now you don't have to use one of these you can draw them freehand but I used a template and all I did was I cut one of them out like this and then I drew around it on some of the black paper. If you don't have the black paper or you don't want to use it on this, what you can actually do is just with a felt tip pen or with your paints, you can colour the cross in yourself. Okay, so I've done mine in black. 
And the other thing that you need to do is get one of the coloured sheets of paper and then draw around it with your hand and then cut out your hand like this. And then all you're going to do is you're going to take your plate and a glue stick. You're going to put some glue firstly on your handprint like that. And then you're going to glue the hand onto the picture like so. And then you take the cross and you're going to put some glue on that as well. And you are going to glue that over the handprint like that. And then with a pen, you are going to write on it. Well, you can write on what you want, but I've written on. Oops, that's the wrong one. <laughs> I've written on the one that Dara finished and you won't be able to see because it's backwards. It says he is risen indeed. But you can write on them whatever you want. So you end up with something that looks a bit like this. And these are great because you can simply put a bit of string through and hang them up or you can pop blue tack on them and stick them up if you want to um, or do whatever you want but they're just a lovely reminder of why we celebrate oh and you could even if you wanted pop one in your window so that people can see it as they walk past which might be nice as well there we go so it's a nice simple one that you can do at home wonderful um and of course, don't forget, we have our calendars as well. And uh, this one is week commencing 5th of April this week. And it's got the actual um, bit from Luke here. And it says, the women had been greeted by angels when they arrived at the tomb with the news that Jesus was alive. The other disciples did not believe him, though. Did not believe them, though. Peter ran to, che ran to check, but all he could do all he could find were the strips of cloth that they had wrapped around the dead Jesus. They must all have been very frightened and disappointed. And this might be why the why two of them were heading home to Emesis. Jesus joined them on the road. It's so tiny. Is this writing? I need new glasses. Jesus joined them on the road and listened to their fear and confusion. He helped them to see how what had happened was all part of God's big rescue plan. Even though he showed so much wisdom and compassion, the, the disciples did not recognise their friend Jesus until he broke the bread like he had at the Last Supper. They ran back to Jerusalem to tell the others that the women had been right all along. So, and it says, wonder together, wonder about why the two men didn't recognise Jesus until he broke the bread wonder why they might not have recognised him perhaps because you know he'd come back from the dead and I guess maybe they felt a bit suspicious about that do play a who am I game and talk about what makes us recognisable people people should be able to recognise us as friends of Jesus because we love God and are kind and honest so ask God to help you be more like Jesus so there's lots that you can do there. As I say, it tells you where to find uh, the bit from Luke. But there are little bits about the resurrection in all of the Gospels. So you can have a look at the different ones if you want to. I've linked to Matthew's Gospel uh, on the page. But there are little bits about it in all of them. So you can have a look if you want to. And see if you can find them in your Bible at home if you want to. Brilliant. So lots to be doing as well oh and also I should say the um the craft activity that I've linked you to in the purse that follows this has loads of different ideas as well not just the one that we've made but lots of different easter crafts that you might want to have a go at and um, some of them look very exciting okay so it is time for our lighthouse prayer now and thank you Paul yes they do look fab oh and uh Jan's put open until 8 p.m. today and tomorrow. Okay, that's for the Book of Condolence. So we're going to have our lighthouse prayer now. You might want to light your lighthouse or tea light or blow a bubble or just sit quietly as we get ready to talk to God. 
<clears throat> God made you and God made me. He made the world for us to see. God loves you and long ago he sent his son to tell us so. Jesus showed us many things to love and share and dance and sing, to learn and pray, to help and care. He promised he'd always be there. He died but then came back to life. Let's celebrate for he's alive. Amen. Lord Jesus, how can I ever repay you for what you've done? Thank you for paying the debt for my life. Thank you for erasing my sin and calling me your own. I am no longer a slave to sin or in debt. I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Dara will be back with us uh, next Friday. Have a wonderful, wonderful week and God bless.